Our next guest lives with alopecia, an autoimmune disease that attacks hair follicles and causes hair loss. Here to talk about her journey and embracing her bald beauty is Joy Blenman. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Love the look, love the whole everything. So yeah. tell me a little bit about when you were diagnosed how lo and how long you've been living with uh, alopecia. Yeah, so I was actually diagnosed as a child. My mom says when I was about 13 months old, she came by my crib and saw huge chunks of hair just sitting in my crib, which was really, really terrifying for both her and my father. They took me to sick kids and they ran several tests for several weeks and it came back as alopecia. Um, back then, the form of alopecia that I had was something called alopecia areata. That's the most common type of alopecia that many Canadians have and it's characterized by little patches of hair. Um, but throughout life, it's progressed a little bit more towards something called universalis. And that's characterized by not having eyelashes, not having eyebrows, and of course, like total scalp loss that I have now today. So it's the most extreme, like, sort of uh, edge of it, of, of alopecia. Okay, so I got to talk about growing up, growing up with this, uh, with this autoimmune disease, because that could not have been easy. What was your experience like as a young black woman with this? Oh, it was excruciating. Um, I remember in grade three, we moved schools actually. And anytime you move schools as a kid, it's hard, but it's even harder when you visibly stand out. Mm -hmm. um, I was the only girl that didn't have hair. And so people were really curious and weirded out. They thought that maybe their hair would fall out if they hung out with me, or mm -hmm. they just didn't think that I looked cool or just thought I looked weird. Often people might misgender me or they would call me a boy, they taunt me or call me Caillou, which was this really popular mm. cartoon back then that was a little bald Quebecois boy. Mm -hmm. He was it, an annoying little boy. He was. He I was always into Caillou. the mischief. Yeah, it you're constant. like, don't call me him. Yeah, I was like, oh, on so many levels, right? please. Like, let's not. <laughs> not Caillou. Not Caillou. And so it was, it was really, really hard. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was particularly hard because mm -hmm. there wasn't much representation back there. And, in terms of diversity, like period, whether that's skin color, body shape, but on top of that, when it come to, came to hair, like really the the ideal of beauty was very much like that teen pop star. So your Jessica Simpsons, your Britney Spears, your Christina Aguilera, these are all phenomenal, gorgeous people, but it's really hard when it's such a binary view of beauty and you look like the antithesis of that. So in turn, I internalized. I felt like I was ugly. I felt like I wasn't mm. worthy. I felt like, who am I? There aren't even toys or books or anything that looks like me. And, and so it was hard both for me and for other kids growing up. I imagine your parents as well. That had to be really yeah. tough to see you go through Incredibly that, right? Incredibly tough on both of them. Now, you are a confident, gorgeous self. I want to talk a little bit about that journey of reaffirming your natural beauty and become the joy we see now. Really, it's a holistic journey. Mm -hmm. I would say starting with the outside beauty, something that really helped was finding ways to look like myself. So after my eyelashes started to fall out around, I'd say university age, um, I took the time to develop some techniques to create lashes that looked a little natural and really opened up your eyes. So eyes are really the window to your soul. And just when I was able to like put my lashes back on, I really felt like myself and that helped me feel beautiful. Similarly, learning ways to do my brows and just learning ways to find wigs that look natural. Mm -hmm. But I would say the inner work, that, that was really, really what was transformative. A big part of that was finding community. It's so important to find your tribe, find people who affirm you, find people who validate you, who truly support you. Because living with hair loss, it's just, um, it can be very isolating. Mm -hmm. And it's a deep loss that you're dealing with. If you were dealing with any other type of loss, whether that's grief or a breakup, you would, you would reach out for support. So I encourage people who are dealing with hair loss to also reach out for support. A community that's really helped me has been CANAF. It's the Canadian Alopecia Areata Foundation. They run workshops, they have conferences, they have support groups um, from kids, teenagers, all the way up to adults. And just finding people who have walked in your same footsteps has really, really, really been affirming. And I encourage other folks to do that as well. That's incredible. Now, like when you find your people, it is a whole different Huge. level of comfort. It's yeah. amazing. Talk to me about some of the, the uh, products that you lean on, that you love, uh, that help you with the outer beauty. There's so many. But the biggest one, again, I would say is lashes. Um, nowadays, there's this incredible technology called magnetic lashes. Yes. So you can just literally just 
pop it on and it goes instantly. You don't have to worry about accidentally gluing your eyes shut. You don't yeah. have to worry about trying yeah. to time it. I'm sure that's <laughs> happened to many of us, myself included. And so Velour makes incredible magnetic lashes. So that's been huge for me. Okay. Another thing has been finding temporary eyebrow tattoos. Mm. I used to have microblading. Microblading is incredible, but it's very expensive and kind mm. of painful. Mm -hmm. Also for folks who are younger, um, tattoos and microblading isn't really accessible. So that's like another great alternative I encourage people to seek out there. And any advice uh, for, for those of us out there uh, that are struggling with alopecia, there are so many folks struggling with it right yeah. now. What would you say to them so that they can find some confidence and feel beauty, beautiful like you do? Yeah, again, I always say it's not linear, but I would say something that's huge is to don't be afraid to seek out help. If you are... Yeah struggling with any other problem, you would seek out professional help. So whether that's help with finding a hairstylist so you can style your wig and feel natural and confident because there's a learning curve with that, mm -hmm. whether that's getting lessons from a makeup artist or whether that's getting professional help from a therapist so you can really have that inside out confidence mm -hmm. and feel beautiful. Lastly, I just want to say bald is beautiful, period. So just lean into that. Beautiful, Joy. Thank you so much for that message. Really good <laughs> and an amazing story and trajectory.